Welcome back, everybody. We're still on the Brave Sound journey in our, in our producer spotlight series. I'm Ben, and this is Ildi. Hi! <laughs> and this time, actually, we are going to watch a Japanese song I heard. Yes. So, as I mentioned, um, ever since like 2015, it's mm -hmm. probably when Brave Sound started declining in how many jobs he was getting. Uh, he's uh, kind of, I, at least I've noticed, he's been more kind of focused on his own company. And his own company has a Japanese girl group called Chersi. That is interesting. Okay, I had or, no idea about Well, this. had a Japanese girl group called Chersi because mm -hmm. they um, they moved to a different label. Okay. But uh, at this point, they were Brave Brave Entertainment and they were produced by Brave Sound himself and his little team of producers who were very talented. Hmm. There's a few guys in there who I really enjoy their songs. Like There's a, there's a duo called Two Champ. Mm -hmm. If you ever hear Two Champ beat at the start of a song, that's them. Okay. You probably heard that at some point. It's pretty prevalent. And there's also oh, who was the other guy that was crazy good? There was uh, there's a few producers in in there that are just really good. Oh, there's a guy called JS hmm. JS who produced a lot of Samuel's album One, which I really really liked, and we may well end up watching a song from. But uh, yeah, they have tons of producers at Brave Entertainment, probably because they're studying under the man himself. Who, along with Two Champ, produced this absolute gem called "Cry Again" by Chelsea. Oh no! I hope I will, will not cry, but you know, if needed, I will cry again. Okay, but this is like condensed form of what a Brave Sound Girl Group song sounds like, and I love it. That's cool. It's J Rock. Oh, ho, ho. Well, they're not J Rock. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Oh, sorry. But <laughs> okay, you will like... assume that by it being in the corner, but like <laughs> because I was like J Rock, yes. So, yeah, there's some random channel called J Rock Channel that has like Chelsea stuff and like A Pink's Japanese releases on it and stuff. I, I don't think know it's supposed to be some like affiliate or something. I think it is, but it's strange that they call themselves J Rock when they do do nothing but Cher pop. Cherry <laughs> Cher okay. It's like an abbreviation for cherry seeds. Hmm, that's not bad. But yeah. You know, we've well, seen uh, weirder names in K-pop. So. Yeah, Vix. <laughs> I mean, Vix is still because like Vix has that like you know the the Vix is basically a uh, witch, isn't it, or like something like that. Mm. Vixen. Victory in Excelsis. Yeah, I know that like this is what it stands for, but it has a double meaning because like. Yeah, you say that, but it's a pretty flimsy excuse, I think. It just, it's a I bit mean, it's of a still better name. than the new name for the latest, you know, produce whatever, which is X One. I mean, I, I, to be fair, I think is one or I zone or whatever is probably one of the worst, just because it's like unpronounceable. I zone because of the way that they've stylized it, it just looks like because if you call it I zone, you've got a star in the middle of the Z and the O, so it looks like it's a new word. So it should be is one, but there's an there's an apostrophe after the I, so it's eyes one. And it just doesn't Eyes make any Eyes sense. Or something like that. Yeah, but they're trying to give it so many meanings that they didn't they didn't give it a clear enough one to start off with. Well, I, <laughs> I think so they went for a different approach with like this season, which is like <laughs> X and one. Yeah, very simple. Uh, anyway, but now we are watching Ignore Chelsea. That. We're Ignore getting that. into Chelsea. <laughs> Ignore that conversation. One, two, three. I became quite a fan of this group, so I might freak out. <laughs> Oh, they've changed lineup since since this group, this song came out, but it's so good. And all of them are Japanese, right? Um, I think so. No, one of them is Thai, I believe. Lena, the rapper, is Thai, I think. I like the piano in this. Oh, yeah. I love this song, sorry. Nothing to apologize. Go on, Miu. Nothing to apologize. Oh, yes. It's just getting catch here. Interesting because it's almost like this chorus is amazing. 
Yeah, but like the pre-course is, is not that thing thing, it's more like just like talk, talking thing. Mm. Go on, Lena. It's a very cool girl group. Oh yeah. Sadly, everyone is sleeping on them. And it's a cool group. Without really, like, you know, saying that, like, oh, I'm powerful. Yeah. They have a load of other songs I love, too. This is like the most great sound song they ever made, though. All the haze in the background. They love their catchy, high pitched melodies. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I would like to point out these girls look very healthy and beautiful. They are, mm -hmm. they are not like insanely. Which is again, some girls look naturally like that, but they look, you know, really, really healthy and beautiful. Mm -hmm. They can really dance too. Their dancing is really quite impressive. I'm guessing they're also training here, right? For, for that piece of they train partly with AOA. Did they? Yeah. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Because I, I can feel that sort of like, you know, very precise Korean training. Yeah. And they definitely go off more of a Korean aura than a Japanese one. Hmm. I think. Yeah. Like you could easily, if you didn't realize mm. how each language sounds, you yeah. would probably mistake them for a K pop group. I think what, you know, what would give away that they are not necessarily, you know, Korean, that like that dress, that shiny, you know, peach, whatever, pinkish peach dress, that looks like a Japanese girl group thing. Yeah. So that doesn't feel like a Korean girl group dress, but it's kind of like in between, I would say. Well, oh, especially because of like this came out, I think, was it 2016 or 2017? Oh. Um, and I guess at that point they've kind of fully transitioned into the overly styled mm -hmm. like designer stuff in Korea So probably these matching like handmade outfits probably were not so prevalent Anyone? I guess Yeah, like like the um, the chic like black ones when they're in that like colored room probably would fit more with k-pop at that point But yeah. those you're right those shiny pink ones dead giveaway. It's not k-pop <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Again, if somebody has the eyes to see, because it's not necessarily like if you true, if, true. You know, like we are. If you're new to K-pop, you're not gonna realize. Yeah, but, you know, if you if you know the difference, especially if you also like watch some Japanese pop, mm. you know, at least if familiar with it to some extent, you would realize it rather quickly. You know, I think this sound it's kind of inter interesting in that sense that it, you know, obviously it conveys it conveys a sad and longing uh, message. Mm -hmm. Uh, just you know, the way with this high-pitched, uh, you know, falsetto chorus uh, that's almost like, you know, crying out for help, but just like in mm. a in a resonant way, just like, oh, it's like, it's almost like you can feel that, you know, internal suffering. Yeah. But without like, you know, here's the high notes to convey the message that I'm really in pain. Yeah. You know, like, so it's, it has that. And it's interesting because it kept the intensity up mm. in you know, the way like it's, it's like it's very much in minor, the whole song, and it... it yeah, it was intense without like, you know, in your face. Mm. I think it had a very clear and nice vibe. Um, you know, that really, really fits a certain mood. So like mm. if I'm in that mood and just like almost like just walking home and, and, and my, my thoughts are cloudy and then, then you are trying to make it clear that this is that cloudy place yeah. in your thoughts. And I think it's just interesting like how the vocal layering was done in a way that reflected that emotion. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I like the sound of this. Really, really nice. And the girls mm. are, you know, clearly talented. Like, there's only even a question on that. And it's always nice to see that kind of, like, diversity in Asian beauty, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, it's just, it's always so nice to see that. <laughs> I find it funny with that uh, because... Um... This is where, like, Brave Sound's vocal production techers technique mm. comes in really hard because these girls are not particularly amazing vocalists. Mm. Like, when you hear them live, they're quite often quite pitchy. 
It's interesting because in, I like, have such a good a impression, bit. you see. Yeah, like, I, like don't get me wrong, anything. I really, really like this group. I thoroughly enjoy almost everything they put out, mm. but as a live band, they're not up there with the Zayas and the uh, and the Sistars and that kind of thing. Mm. But they're 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 good enough, but, you know, they're not insane vocalists like you would get in other groups, but they're... You didn't really hear that in this in this production, did you? Because it's so well masked with all of the layering, yeah, they, definitely. I all didn't of the high pitched, and all of the like crazy amounts of layered vocals just in the background doing interesting things. In all honesty, though, like sometimes these things are, you know, these things can be misleading. Now we obviously know, you know, from Ben's, you know, experience and like you know watching these videos, like he knows like what the background vocally for this group is. But at the same time, well, obviously, that's just my interpretation. And and also I think it's quite tricky because like many would assume that like Korean indie singers, for example, have a tendency to sing in a you know very restrained way, almost like you know very breathy, and you know and then it just goes to different places. But and then people would like if you know people are thinking if something is like if so if somebody is not belting, then they don't have the ability to belt. Because, like, especially in Western pop music, we often associate, you know, just loudness with skill. Yeah. And this is this is how basically how you know a lot of you know talent shows around here work. Mm. You know, sometimes somebody's like trying to force themselves to sing some high note to like a, you know, a really badly arranged Whitney Houston classic, <laughs> and then people are like, oh my god, they can sing. This a high is note. Uh, this is where all those vocal coaches that you watch up, well, that I watch on YouTube reacting to stuff would say, it's just pulling up chest. <laughs> everyone just wants everyone to pull up chest <laughs> it's, it's, and it's it's something like but i uh, think uh in, that's one of the reasons why i actually really love like uh, you know korean music japanese music because uh, you know i'm more knowledgeable about you know korean uh music they are more sophisticated listeners almost mm. that they can pick up on like if somebody is singing with a breathy falsetto that is hard to do that is technically hard to do and i think it's it's i'm always so impressed by the fact that like you know that country is full of technically amazing singers and then by the way that you can do this 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 and this it's just like on top of that like it's <laughs> the basic for many many artists Mm -hmm. uh, so I would argue that it's like sometimes it can be misleading uh, that, you know, if you listen to it and you're like, oh, nobody's like, you know, singing any high note, then it must be easy to sing. Oh, it isn't. It isn't. Mm -hmm. So and especially if it's rhythmically challenging. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a classic case of like with a lot of, uh, you know, R&B songs that like that even the classic like American R&B, you know, when people are like, oh, this doesn't sound that, you know, hard or no high notes whatsoever. And you're just like, oh, my God, like completely <laughs> lost in the rhythm. Yeah. But yeah, it's. Very, very nicely done. I think he exactly what you said in the previous video. He evened those differences out, mm. and they all came across to me as a new listener as like this just sounds really nice. This yeah, just... that's that's I think what I love about Brave Sound. It's a complete picture. Like he paints a complete picture. If you get what I mean. Yeah. Using all the elements that you can get from the band. He, he's themselves. really good at accentuating strengths and mm. hiding weaknesses in bands. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. That's, that's something that you mentioned. This is really good. Do you guys have any other examples that like where that happened in K pop or in Brave Sound songs when when you definitely felt that the producer had a great, you know, hand in terms of presenting uh, the group or the artist in the best possible light? Uh, because we would love to listen to those examples. So let us know what you thought, and see you guys in the next video.